My name is Alex Dorgen. I'm an Ansible Solutions Specialist, and today I'm going to be talking about how Ansible can be used to help automate some of your Windows environment. So how do I get started automating Windows? Well, first I need to make sure my target host is set up appropriately so that I can actually run automation on it. Underneath the covers, Ansible is leveraging PowerShell, so I do need to make sure PowerShell 3.0 or newer, as well as .NET 4.0 or newer, are on that target system. We do have some scripts that can help with that as part of our Windows guide, which I will share later. Since this is a Windows host and not a Linux host, we leverage WinRM rather than SSH. So we need to make sure WinRM is actually set up so that the listener is created and is activated. And obviously I have my appropriate authentication method established. So depending on what your security team requires and what you have set up, I can have that appropriate method set up in the Win transport method later on that Ansible will leverage in order to communicate with those end systems. So now that I have my Windows server set up and actually ready to automate, you know, what do I actually want to do? What do I want to automate to make this process easier for me? So as I look into automating on a Windows environment, I really have the same capability that I would have in Linux. So Windows is not a second class uh, prop platform as far as automation goes for Ansible. I can really do those same functions. So whether it's installing or uninstalling MSIs or execs, whether it's stopping and starting services or really even managing the registry itself, I can leverage all of that through Ansible modules. One of the things I've seen some customers do is, especially because of the requirement for a lot of services in Windows to need administrator rights, I've seen some customers switch from help desk and ticketing systems requiring those users to have admin access to leveraging Ansible instead. So I can take maybe a seven page document that includes some of my passwords and replace it with an Ansible script that can restart a simple service or an application in the correct order and just allow access to that end user. So instead of giving full admin access to an entire server, now I've pared it down and given them just admin access to run that particular task. As I start looking to other things that I can do on those servers, I can handle the full reboot process and update process. So leveraging WSUS or Windows Update, since we know with Windows especially, a lot of times when I'm running updates, there may be multiple reboots that are required and then additional updates need to be installed. So the modules can handle that process. Also, as I look into user management, whether it's local users or domain controller users through Active Directory, I can manage that leveraging Ansible as well. And then I start looking into the rest of the processes on those VMs. So whether it's managing certificates, whether it's actually pushing just different files. So I leverage quite a bit IIS in my environment. I need to make sure the certificates are accurate and up to date for those servers. I need to make sure the application files themselves are properly distributed to that host. I can manage all of that through Ansible. And the thing I always like to remind people is I can also just leverage some of the existing PowerShell scripts that you have to get started. So I don't need to learn immediately all of the capabilities of Ansible. I can leverage some of your existing PowerShell scripts, but put them into version control. So rather than having scripts living on a laptop or on a VM somewhere, I can put it into something like GitHub or GitLab. So there's version control on it. I've got oversight into what automation is being done. And then worst case scenario, that laptop crashes or that virtual machine crashes, I have a version controlled history of that script available to me. And now as personnel rotate, I still maintain access to that script. So automation can live on as personnel and as virtual machines change. So as I look into the larger environment, remember, nothing lives by itself in IT anymore. While I may only be responsible for Windows virtual machines or Windows EC2 instances, I still have to play into the larger ecosystem. I still may have load balancers that I need to integrate with so I can actually provide a front-facing application. I may need to work with the different hypervisor teams, whether they're on-premise or in the cloud. And ideally, I'd like to provide maybe my capabilities out to an end user via a service catalog and service now by leveraging a common platform i can really start integrating all these pieces together so while i may only be a windows expert and i don't have responsibility for vSphere or for service now i can leverage the capability of ansible to tie all these platforms together so as far as the end user experience is concerned they go through the same interface the same process they get the end systems that they desire and they're off and running so I'll show a little bit now about how some of those playbooks can look, and I'll also run through a quick demonstration of how I can do some patching via ServiceNow without the user ever really needing to log into Ansible. 
So as I mentioned, there are guides that have been created to help you set up that Windows host so that I can actually automate via Ansible. So we walk through the process of the individual host requirements and WinRM. We'll also walk through actually what is WinRM and the different authentication options. And then we even go into a few use cases, some desired state configuration and performance and typical questions that we see. So as I talked about with those authentication options, there are several that are available to you depending on how you want to leverage that particular system. So are you leveraging local accounts, Active Directory accounts, and what sort of encryption level are you leveraging? So it walks through those processes as well as the additional variables that I'll need to make sure are set at the either group or host level to properly connect to those systems as I'm going through it. So I'll walk through, I leverage Kerberos in my environment. So I have all the Kerberos settings appropriately set up and I do have Kerberos set on my particular host. So I do have you know, the WinRM knit already completed. I've got Kerberos authentication set up. So I've already gone through the process of installing the Kerberos library in my particular environment and I've configured the realm appropriately for my Active Directory account. So all of this is already set up for me, but there's another aspect that I can leverage as I'm leveraging Ansible to authenticate into those Windows hosts. As far as modules that exist, we have a number of modules that have been created and are maintained by Red Hat. There are also plenty of other modules that exist to manage all kinds of pieces of the Windows environment. So whether it's trying to manage ACLs, certificates, obviously any command that I can run via the command line on Windows, I can either use the Win Command or Win Shell module. I can copy different files onto those devices. I can maintain the domain controllers themselves, groups, any sort of file or that I need to find or replace, delete, I can leverage through Ansible as well as the registry itself. So it gives you a full capability to manage those Windows devices across really your entire ecosystem. So if I wanna see what can a playbook look like, this is a simple playbook that I have set up to run patching on my Windows servers. So I've just got some basic steps if I'm taking a list of packages uh, that are comma separated and creating a list. And then in this case, I install Windows updates. So I've, I've created some defaults just to make this more robust for my end users, but this allows me to pass the individual categories to the end user. So if they want to update every single category, they can, or if they only want to do security updates, that ability is available to them. As we talked about that rebooting server capability, I can add in reboot true. So if there are multiple reboots that need to happen as part of that update, Ansible can handle that. And then if there's specific packages that I want to either only install or to not install, I can add this in here as well. And then obviously I like seeing the results. So I have that capability. As I get into more complex items, I leverage OpenSCAP in my environment to do scans of my Windows servers. So I go through the process of actually installing the scanner, installing the Visual Studio package, and then copying some files over there to run the scan. And then as you can see, I do use that win command module to actually run that scan and do an evaluation. And I even switch back to Linux because I have some of these pieces actually running on a Linux server to display the results. So I'm actually going back and forth between Linux and Windows. The beautiful part about Ansible is all of this is item potent. So when I'm doing this install of you know, the OpenSCAP scanner and the Visual Studio package, as long as that's already on that end system, it will just check and say, okay, it will not reinstall these particular packages on that end system. So whether I'm leveraging WinPackage, whether I'm leveraging a third party solution such as Chocolatey, I can install those packages out to the end system and will only update if that does not currently exist on that package. So as I talked about with those inventory variables, so I have a Windows 2016 server running in my environment. And as you can see, I have set up this Ansible connection variable for WinRM that Ansible port for 5985 and Ansible win transport for Kerberos because that's what I leverage in my environment. The Ansible user and Ansible password are stored as machine credentials in my environment. So all of that capability is you know, hidden from the end user. They don't need to see what the password is or anything like that. So if I want to actually run automation, in this case, I talked about ServiceNow. So maybe I wanna run a patching job through ServiceNow as my front end. So in this case, I've got a job set up for running automation on Windows. I've got several of those categories already available, as I mentioned, security updates. But in this case, I actually want to patch everything that exists in this environment on the host. I don't want to disable, I don't want to exclude any packages or only install certain ones. And I would like to reboot after the install so the server's up and running. In this case, I'll do order now through my service now environment. And this will automatically kick off a job in my Ansible environment to actually patch my Windows systems. So in this case, I'm actually running this playbook in check mode. 
And the nice thing about check mode in Ansible means it will show me what the results would be without actually changing the system. So especially as I'm getting started and running automation, I may not immediately want to change my environment, copy files out. Check mode essentially allows me to run a particular playbook as if it would make those changes, but nothing on that end system changes. So in this case, it will show me what packages would be updated on this system without actually making any of those updates. So most of those Ansible Windows modules have this capability built in so I can run the automation without physically making that change to the end system. So again, it provides a little bit more capability of I can run automation without having that risk immediately of will this cause a breaking change. So I like to run a lot of my playbooks in check mode first to see what the results may be. And it looks like my systems didn't have any updates because I did run this earlier. And as you can see, it's successful. I can see what the output is. None of my system, ooh, one of my systems did have an update. It had a security intelligence update for Windows. Because of how I have my automation built, I actually update my end request in ServiceNow. So this is part of a larger workflow in Ansible. So this will actually close out this ticket. And I did actually provide the update back to the end system that says this particular system updated this particular package. I've also linked in both emails. So I have emails that get sent out to my end users that say this is the patching result. So again, that exact same information. So I can take that patching information and really put it wherever I need it to be. So whether it's that email report that I showed, whether it's going into a log aggregator like Splunk or an Elk stack, I have that full capability to prove out really whatever I'm doing on the Windows environment. And as I talked about, I can leverage OpenSCAP, I can make registry edits, I really can manage Windows just like it would any other system with Ansible. So I can really start tying this into my larger environment. So I highly encourage you to take a minute, look at that Ansible Windows guide. It gives you a good idea of how this setup works. And then there was a Ansible Fest session back in 2019 that talks through how I can start managing Windows like Linux with Ansible. So it walks through some of the common things that we've seen from the Ansible automation side while trying to manage Windows. Again, it doesn't need to be a completely separate process. While I know in many cases, different teams manage Linux from Windows because they're very different systems, have a lot of different commands, but I can start building these into the larger ecosystem. So networking and Linux and Windows and security can start speaking a common language and having a common automation while still leveraging the best of breed for those tools. I'm not gonna tell you to install Apache on Windows. I can still leverage IIS. Appreciate you taking the time out to learn a little bit more about how Ansible can work in a Windows environment. Please let me know if you have any questions.